Howdy folks, today I'm going to show you how to make a shopping bag out of a feed bag without any sewing. So let's get started. I also have a video on how to sew them, so if you prefer that method, there's a link to that video. Okay, there are a couple options here and I'll let you choose which way you prefer. Much of it involves just how concerned you are with the appearance of the bag. So if you want it to look nicer, you're going to want to put a little bit more effort into the process. I highly recommend watching the whole video before you start so that you can see the different ways and decide which way you want to do it. For this method, you'll need scissors, duct tape, and a stapler. You can buy duct tape in all kinds of colors, so there's plenty of ways to make your bag look cool if you want to do that. Optional extra things are one, a box that's the size of the bottom of your bag, and two, a piece of cardboard to line the bottom of the bag. You can even cut out the side of the box if that's what you want to do at the end. You'll also want to decide whether you want to use the inside or outside of the bag. If you want to use the pattern, then you want to turn it inside out at this point before we start. Now that you have everything, let's get started. The first option is whether you want to leave the original bottom seam or make a nicer flatter seam. If you're fine with having some mess on the inside, you can just leave the original sewed seam. It's very strong and it's just a little bit harder to make it flatten out. If you're cutting, cut the old seam all the way across. Next you want to tape the two sides together like this to make your new flat seam. The next step is to decide on the shape of the bottom of the bag. If you're using a box, put it inside the bag and arrange it so that the sides are how you want them. Try to get the bottom nice and level and the seam to run through the middle of the box. Next we're going to flatten out the triangular flaps that are sticking out at the ends of the seam. If they aren't even, you might consider messing with the box a bit more to make them even. Once they're flattened out, take your duct tape and tape them to the sides. Optionally, you can tape them to the bottom instead of the sides. The bottom is now complete. If you want the bag to be inside out, now's the time to turn it inside out. If you want to use the pattern but want the flaps on the inside, the bag was already inside out and you're flipping it back to right side out. Now that your bag is right side out, you can put a piece of tape across the bottom seam if you want to reinforce it or to make it look nicer. Next is the top seam. These feed bags are typically very tall, so you'll probably want to cut off the top to make the bag whatever height pleases you. If you have a straight edge and a pencil, it can help make a straighter cut. Or you can use lines or markings on the bag as a reference. After you've cut, you can line the top with tape. If you want to hide the tape, you can make a small fold to the inside and tape that flap to the inside of the bag. If you use a few shorter segments of tape, you can have an easier time avoiding wrinkles in the tape. Finally, we'll make the handles. For each handle, cut two strips of tape, each a little bit longer than the bag. Lay one face up and put the other about halfway over it, face to face. Then fold over the excess flaps to make your handle. I ran out of my white tape, so I'm using gray duct tape for the handles here. Next, cut off the ends of the handles to clean them up. Then decide where you're going to attach them to the bag. Use a small piece of tape to hold them in place temporarily. Make sure it's twisted in the way you want to and then put a few staples to hold it. You can then remove the small holder tape and put in more staples. Match the second handle to the positioning of the first and then do the same stapling technique. Finally, we cover up the staples with a couple more strips of tape on the inside and the outside. If you prefer, you could also put a strip of tape around the entire outside of the bag to better hide these. And your bag is done. You can put in your cardboard liner if you want one. One more tip is to be aware that the UPC on the bag can scan at the store. If you'll be using this bag at a store that carries that product, you'll want to mark over it or tape over it or be sure it's on the inside of the bag so it doesn't get scanned. Now this bag, I tested it out. This is a 40 pound bag of salt and as you can see, this bag is super, super sturdy. You probably won't be carrying nearly this much in a bag anyway. That's it for this time. If you had any questions or comments, leave a comment below. Again, if you want to sew the bags instead, I have a video on those techniques too. If you found this helpful, please leave a like. And if you want to leave me a tip, you can hit the thanks button or send me some PayPal or some Bitcoin. Thanks for watching and see you next time.